Hello, everybody. This is Elizabeth and Jeff Vaudre, the owners of Tipples Brews and Wine in Gainesville, Florida. And thank you for joining us with this week's virtual wine tasting. Um, tasting Tuesday. Yeah, that works. We'll go with that, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So this week we're going to have, uh, by the way, first tasting of 2021. Um, <laughs> 2020 is in the rearview mirror, so we're going to have some fun. Uh, we're starting out with kind of a unique wine, going with a, a rosy outlook for the new year. How about that? A rosé for a rosy outlook. So uh, this is a California... Nobody's laughing. <laughs> I'm just laughing at what a dad joke that is. Uh, I'm, I'm, trying. I'm trying. Oh, hey, Rachel's here. Oh, good. So we are drinking a rosé, but not just any rosé. Uh, so this is the Arnott Roberts rosé made out of Tariga Nacional. That's the grape. It's a Portuguese grape, huh. uh, but grown in Northern California uh, and made by, by the way, Arnott Roberts. Um, I know uh, Myra and John are not with us tonight. She would go nuts for it. Arnott Roberts were the ones responsible for the Creo Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, okay. So that one that ran through and everyone was nuts for, mm -hmm. same winemaker amazing uh makers actually before way. you get started though i want to um say thank you to harriet most dedicated award oh yeah she drove up from key west today <laughs> to be here in time that's right <laughs> so thank you. yeah Sorry. yeah i mean that's a nine hour drive for those of you that that's don't right. know <laughs> that's right. first sip is to harriet yeah there you go, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all ready, man. I got my wine wand in it and everything. That's nice. awesome. So if you haven't already opened up your wine, go ahead and pop it open. Um, this is a rosé. Uh, you're going to chill it like a white. So we're talking about 45 to 50 degrees as an optimal range. About one hour in the fridge will get you there. It's a really beautiful salmon-y color. Do we have a story for the label? No, it's just pretty art. They, they, um, they, they actually, all their labels do have a similar thematic style. Mm. This kind of Asian style throwback. Mm -hmm. It's they're gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, honestly, if there's more to it, it didn't jump out. Okay. So, <laughs> so um, about one hour to chill. Pairings for this guy uh, with most rosés, you know, uh, seafood, salad, um, light cheeses, and dried fruits all would be excellent with it. Mm. Mm. By the way, I know it's unusual for me. Almost always I've had these wines before, but this was picked based on the incredible experience I've had with all of the other Arnott Roberts wines. This is my first sip. So that's kind of fun for me. It's a, a blind tasting. And now that I've had a sip, thank goodness it measures it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. mm -mm -mm. Not at all surprised. Let's uh, jump over to the slides. Look how easy that was this week. <laughs> Elizabeth must be in charge. <laughs> So, so here we have our beautiful rosé. Uh, like I said, I already went through the pairings. They're not written down for you, so you just have to take notes, evidently. Um, Tariga Nacional, uh, alcohol content on this guy, 11%. Okay. Pretty much standard on uh, whites and, uh, and rosés. Hmm. Um, let's uh, go ahead and jump back. We'll talk a little bit about what we're tasting, and then we'll go over okay. to why we're tasting it and where it's from. All right. All right, um, really nice. Uh, we'll talk about the interesting parts of um, Tariga Nacional, but it's actually an intense grape. And so I was really excited to see what that would, what would come from that as far as a rosé. So descriptions are juicy melon, tart strawberry, citrus rind. Um, sometimes I get a bit of um, a melon rind where you're getting oh, you know, that sure. tart as you get mm -hmm. there with that nice zesty, uh, freshness. But honestly, because this is robust, it has more body to it than almost any other rosé I can remember drinking lately. It's got a nice weight and body to it. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, there's, um, there are tannins. There are actually tannins in this rosé. 
And that is common not to be the case because of the short amount of time that the juice spends with the skins. Okay. So this had to be an incredibly intense grape to put some of those tannins through to this point. They're, they join, they balance really nicely with mm -hmm. the acid. So they kind of hit you at the same time. Okay. Puckering in the middle palate as you're, as you're sipping on it. So it may not be something that is as easy to pick out and say, oh, those are the tannins like when we're drinking some of the robust reds. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have picked out that there were tannins in it. It's kind of a yes and with the acid. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the salmon color, mm -hmm. that's from letting the skins be there? It's from the short time in contact of the juice with the skin. No, but I mean like in comparison to a white that doesn't okay. have, it doesn't that, the white doesn't have like any time with skins then? Well, white would depend. So okay. when we talk about the white Pinot Noir, it has mm -hmm. even less time with the okay. skin. And there are whites from reds, mm -hmm. but um, most whites though, like mm -hmm. Chardonnay grape, right. those are white those grapes are white anyway. Grapes. So, okay. and they still have minimal skin contact. <clears throat> Um, but I need to put on the list. This, wait a minute. We need to drink an orange wine. I thought we drank an orange wine. Did, no, I don't think so. We've talked about it, but we haven't actually done yeah. it. Yeah. So we'll drink. So an orange wine is not anything to do with the, the orange fruit. But uh, for anyone that, that doesn't know already, it's extended skin contact with a white grape. I thought we drank an orange wine. Maybe you just brought it home and we drank it here. Maybe. Maybe they're yeah. they're really intriguing. Yeah, it's a rough problem to have, Elizabeth. I just can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so how how long does the for this one for this rosé? How long did the skin stay in contact with the juice, and how does that compare to others? So that's good a good question, question. Mm -hmm. and it is a minimal amount of time. For example, the in. The so like minimal, 15 minutes, two weeks? I'm about to okay. answer that. All right, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just give me a moment, woman. I'm trying to <laughs> exactly. answer this. So there is a rosé in the store, an Italian rosé that's called 11-minute rosé. Mm -hmm. And that's because it has 11 minutes of skin contact. So okay. it's a really good way for me to kind of remind, you know, remember. So, all right, so was this 11 minutes? Was it 14 minutes? The bottom line is it's not very long. No, we're just talking minutes. Right, not, you're talking okay, minutes, wow. not hours that or really days. really is minimal. Yeah. I'm surprised it has this much of an effect on the color just from- mm -hmm. So so the, the grape is crushed, right. left for 11 minutes. Yeah, approximately, yeah, a certain number of minutes, right. And then, so what they do, and I'll, I could cover this later on, but we'll do it now. So they do what's called a slow crush. So they, they, they do it enough to, they crush it enough to kind of burst all the grapes open. And then they let all that juice kind of come together and work for a certain number of minutes here. So it's called 11, 15, something in that. And then they finish with a harder crush, boom, but kind of fast mm -hmm. in order to get all the juice out and then drain it off the skins okay. and get it out of there. And that fast crush doesn't crush the seeds? Well, in, in, you know, faster, but not enough to crush the seeds because okay. then you're going to get the bitter. So okay. it's, it's obviously there's going to be their own artwork, you know, uh, sure. in, in, uh, in creating that. But that's, that's how it is. Um, and, and that is a, that is the process for a rosé made with intention, which this is one of them. There are rosés out there in the market that are side products. Yeah, so there are rosés where they will take it, they'll crush it, and they will drain off a certain amount of the lighter, mm -hmm. um, the, the lighter, it's called grape must yeah. when it's crushed and ready for fermentation. They'll drain some of it off, which is looking like rosé. But what they're really doing is they're concentrating what's left to okay. make a more intense wine. So that is, it's a side effect. So, yeah, it's a byproduct. Yeah, it's a byproduct mm -hmm. rosé, which once again, not bad, mm -hmm. but not as good as doing it with intention, okay. in my opinion. <clears throat> hmm. Actually, I did cover the pressing in my tasting notes, so it's at the right time. By the way, this is organic as well. Oh. So um, secondary thing. So we talked about kind of the fruits mm -hmm. um, and the acidity, the tartness, a little bit of the mouth feel of that light tannin mm -hmm. that plays around with the acid and puckers. Um, Let's talk about maybe some minerality. Uh, this is a mineral driven location, which we'll cover uh, when we go through the maps. 
Yeah, I can definitely taste minerality in it too. Right. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of a nice um, granite kind of, uh, you know, like a lean, crisp mineral mm -hmm. content. Um, and the easier one to identify is the salinity. Like it does finish, like take, take that again and think about a little bit of like salted melon. And to me, that one's the aspect of the minerality sure. that really jumps mm -hmm. out as an easy to identify. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Um, you want me to share? Yeah. Let's. Um, yeah. Does anyone want to share any of your thoughts before we get into all the maps and all the kind of thing about, about this wine and what you're tasting and enjoying or not? Jeff, the thing that you just said. Oh, sorry, Harriet. No, no, no. Go ahead. The thing that you just said about like salt air and like salted fruit, um, it reminds me of like prosciutto wrapped um, cantaloupe melon. Mm. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. I like that. Mm -hmm. And because of that weight in there, there's almost, I wouldn't quite call it a savory effect on the strawberry, but it is a very kind of like a smooth richness that plays with that saltiness. So I think that's a good call. Mm -hmm. Very much, Robin. Yeah. What are you thinking, Harriet? So this reminds me a lot, and it wasn't until you mentioned the slate and the mineral flavor of it. Mm -hmm. It reminds me so much of a rosé that our one of our anchor friends makes in Germany. It like huh. all of a sudden just hit me. I really like this one. Nice. Oh, good. I, Excellent. I totally want to take some of this to Germany to a friend who she will love <laughs> it. <laughs> if they'll okay. ever let us in again. Yeah, well, <laughs> there is that. Um, on, our, on our way home today, Julie asked me if I thought that they would let us in before summer. And I'm like, I don't know. Just depends. Yeah. I think we'll have to see how the vaccine rollout goes. Yep. Yeah. So I think it's funny we use the term crush because crush seems to be really much more aggressive. Crush, you think of, you know, crushing the seeds, crushing the stems, crushing oh, right. and press, you just use the word press right tail in there. I think it's more of a press mm -hmm. you know, it is. to do right. some skins without without a full crush. You know, you think of crush with the stomp of old, you know, the old foot stomp. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's not that true. aggressive. So sure. But you're right. Yeah, it's not. It's more of a controlled press. Mm -hmm. And they do, and they've got a lot of very specific variations and pressures that they that different winemakers employ to achieve different things. And especially because you think about it, um, who was it? One of our wines last week was whole cluster. In fact, it was the Washingtonian. Okay. The tenant Syrah was whole cluster. So- Did it, we drink the pundit? No, oh, but it's by tenant. By tenant, yeah. right. Okay. Tenet, yeah. So mm -hmm. tenant, the pundit. Uh, yeah. So, and they included that in order for some of what was in that you know in the stems to be squished oh, into there as right. well to rub, you know kind of make it I even more a little more gnarly a little more grip right um a little more brambly yeah and um now that wouldn't apply here i mean this is really pretty so that mm -hmm. would seem out of place mm -hmm. but, um, this is pretty but it is yeah. robust for yeah rosé. it doesn't feel weak or um what do you call it when it just like slips off your tongue and Wafts? No, 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 no. The wine term when you're like, anyway. All right. I can't, we'll I, if I think of it, I'll think. But you've said like, <sighs> I can't think of it. It's it's okay. a it's a term that you've used before. With, though. with a lack of finish, right? Oh, yeah. Like where it's oh, just yeah, like it not where it just like yeah, yeah the the flavor mm -hmm. doesn't hang out. It just yeah, that would be a short finish. Okay. So yeah, this is a lingering a finish. It's hanging out. It's evolving, but it get you know, like it starts with that kind of cherry. In fact, I would say a little bit of raspberry. Okay. On that, and then mm -hmm. it goes to that kind of uh, salted melon as it mm -hmm. finishes, and it hangs out on the palate. Uh, I'm this not getting guy, any cherry though. No. You're getting cherry. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not. <laughs> a tart, very tart. Cherry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm th but for me, it feels more like strawberries, melons, like mm, strawberries. Yeah. 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 Good way to go. I'm, I'm um, trying to come to the red side, but th this is awesome. I mean, this is <laughs> I was going to ask you, Brian. I was going to ask. I was thinking. I was thinking maybe good, good, good vibes this week. Yeah, yeah. Especially because it's, it's hopefully your bottle wasn't corked this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looked over at me earlier. He goes, "I, you know, I'll drink the reds with you, but I just like this so much better." And I'm like, "It's fine. I'm fine." <laughs> <laughs> just more for you. That's so great. 
<laughs> well, there's, okay. like, there's like a layer of like, I don't know, like more, it's more refreshing to me than the red. It I is, yeah. it is, it is refreshing. It's definitely more refreshing. You know what I like about this one though, because we're talking about a very big grape here. Mm -hmm. Well, because it's a very small grape. It's small it's grape with big, big, big right. flavor. But, um, and we'll cover that, but um, it, this guy could go with salmon. It's big enough, like salmon, like an orange, you know, okay. kind of a thing, you know, like a, a Asian salmon, Asian glaze. Oh yeah. That would be fantastic mm -hmm. with this. That's where I was going. Yeah, that would that would be. Evidently, I'm creating this. salmon a l'orange as a new thing that people do. <laughs> if someone wants to do it, I think it could work. Yeah, but, there um, you go. Okay, let's jump to the slides. Okay. And... Thank you very much. You're welcome. Next one. He's next. Yep. All right. So here's my favorite USA uh, wine guide. Uh, here we are once again in the big blob. So by the way, so we were Willamette. You know, and then last week we were here, and now we're jumping down to the top of here. Okay. Um, California, uh, North Coast, Clear Lake is where we are. So this is Napa and Sonoma right here. So we're just north around Clear Lake. Flabby. You've described things as flabby before when they go off the tongue like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the word. I usually use. just, uh, I usually call flabby something that's fruity without character, no structure, no acidity. Well, that's what I'm saying. Okay. That's not this. Okay. So yeah. you, so it's like bigger and it, it has, it stays longer. Flabby is the word that you've used okay. to describe the ones that just fall off and are weak and everything. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Right, I'll go with that. There that, we go. That is the word you've used. I, I do <laughs> use flabby a lot. I don't okay. like flabby ones. I had one. <laughs> Recently, it was. We not all prefer to be described as not flabby. That's right. right. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of something that we'll talk about at the end of the show too. The end of the I'm show. It, I'm calling it a show now. Yeah. It's a show. Yeah, he's been referring to it as a show That's all day. Right. So I'm like, okay. This is the Elizabeth and Jeff show. There you go. We're gonna we just, have our own theme, theme song. song. Yep. All right. So once again, Clear Lake. Hey. Um, and then here we have Clear Lake. So, uh, is that a neighborhood or is that? It's a yeah, it's a neighborhood. Um, wow. there, there are people living all around it. Well, there's you That's know, it's gorgeous, gorgeous and it's yeah. California. There's going to be people. Mm -hmm. But oh, wow. uh, I mean, look at the the nice elevation there. So Clear Lake <laughs> is uh, actually a pretty cool place. So Clear Lake is I already told you where it is. It's it actually starts around 1,300 square feet and goes up to 13,000, 1,300 feet above sea level. There you go. <laughs> and it goes up to 3,000 at the peaks here, but they're not growing them that high. The wine we're drinking today comes from 1,400 feet above sea level. Um, and you can see like where they're growing these guys. There's a Clear Lake vineyard right here. So um, the the... The sand, the soil mm -hmm. composition is volcanic sand with obsidian, just like we just drank from Washington State okay. in the Columbia Valley last week. And that's why we get a little bit of that nice minerality right, coming right. through. It is the coolest location to grow grapes in California. Really? Yep. Combination of because elevation, the elevation and, mm -hmm. uh, and location. Huh. So uh, yeah, so there are a lot of those things that they want to, um, in this case, what they're doing with, the, with that coolness is they have a lot of sun, but they can leave the grapes on for an extended period of time to really kind of get the most out of them. Because um, they're also, obviously it's arid still. I mean, you look at, look at these mountains over here. Right. Yeah, so. so lots of sun, the nights cool quickly and one of the coolest climates in, uh, one of the coolest climates in California. Yeah. That's interesting because it's so much farther south than yeah. Yeah. like the typical. Right. So here's the grape, and you can see it's a um, small size grape. Mm -hmm. So we have a larger proportion of skin to juice, which is going to give us a more intense grape. And honestly, uh, now that I was thinking about this, because I was looking at the new year and what we're going to be drinking, we need to drink some Portuguese wine. Oh, right. Because it's big, intense, and dark. Just... It's the kind of wine that's going to make Julie happy. <laughs> and Brian's like, no, boo. <laughs> Whatever. He's gonna drink side beer anyways. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So, um, so here we, um, we talked about, um, I'm going to use this, you know, regularly now we're talking about uh, dissecting the grape. So in this case, we've got a really a thicker skin, which gives us all of those nice, you know, most of the uh, aromas and astringency and a lot of the intensity that we're getting from here. So here we're getting uh, sugars and some acidity and some deeper acidity down in here. Um, and here we have some of the grapes being harvested here from Arnott Roberts. And it is Arnott, not Arnu. So are they hand harvesting then if they're going through like that or is that, do you know? Yeah, that would be, that would be hand right there. Yeah, they're just pulling it along. As far as I can see, I don't see anyone working with a the machine there other than to pull it. Yeah. Wow. So um, Arnott Roberts. So let's talk about these guys. Um, Arnott Roberts is run by two best friends that grew up together in Napa Valley and they're still together. Um, Duncan Arnott Myers and Nathan Lee Roberts are the two winemakers. And they have gained kind of a cult following because they make these incredible wines, but they're not 200 to $500 a bottle. Okay, yeah. You know, um, and so they get kind of the following of some of those guys, you know, Screaming Eagle and this kind of thing, but they, uh, they just, and they are negotiants, so they do buy their grapes, but they go to areas that have an incredible terroir they feel should be expressed and they make very small productions. So they can go to an area that does not make a lot of grapes and say, you're gonna be my 100% supplier for this wine because I don't have to make that many bottles okay. and they don't have to blend it with things. Sure. So like what we're drinking tonight is from this one specific vineyard around um, Clear Lake and they wanted to turn that into, into rosé and they, you know, they bought all of it. So I think it's kind of fun. They, uh, the winery started in the year 2001. So they have no grapes of their own? Nope. Okay. Nope. And here they are with their two dogs, by the way, which is important to me. <laughs> it makes me happy that they take the time to be with their dogs. <laughs> but here you go. Like, here are the tanks. Um, this is a press right here. So that, that guy's going on top and squishing it down. And Those look like um, beer tanks. Well, they're very similar. Very, very similar. I love the cooperage. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. So weird question. Do the grapes get washed first? No. Ever uh, or just not in organic wineries? No, they're, they're, they're not because most wineries, not all, but most wineries use the natural, um, yeast. the natural yeast that's on the grapes hmm. to ferment. They don't add, it's not like beer where you're, you're pitching some yeast once you get the, uh, the fermentable, it work for beer and must for wine. Once you get that ready, it's in, 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 uh, you know, in the wine industry for the most part, not always, uh, you actually, it just, it's the, you, you, you dance with the, what's that, what's that phrase? The dance with the date you brought or whatever. Something like anyway, that. Anyway, you, yeah, you're using the, the yeast from the grapes themselves. So you do not wash them. Wow. Yeah. And the alcohol itself alcohol kills, kills everything. It kills everything. Yeah. Uh, so here we have their uh, tasting room. They're in Healdsburg, California. They have a lot of bicycle racing and everything or hmm. activities around there. And so anyway, let's jump back out. Do you, do you know what those are? Off the top of my head, looks like a Syrah, their cab. And I don't know what the other one is. It's a white. I, it yeah, could be a the Chardonnay. One the far, yeah, the far, far, left the far is left. white, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure which one that is. By the way, these guys have a gamay I just found out today. Really? It's like, ooh, wait a minute now. Hmm. What's that? Because everyone enjoyed that Beaujolais that we had. Yes. Beaujolais is the gamay grape. So. What is the gamay grape? Remind me. The gamay grape. Remember um, the Beaujolais we had right before Thanksgiving? We might have been in Pennsylvania. Mm, I can't remember. Anyway, it's uh, it's it's fantastic. So. It's a, it's a, it's a fruit forward grape, but it has a lot of character and uh, it's, it, uh, it pairs with almost everything, which is one of the great reasons I always recommend it for Thanksgiving dinner because it, it's, um, it's almost like this guy. This All right. You said so it much. poultry or like beefs or whatever too. Like but for the gamay grape. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It, yeah. It would go poultry to um, lean beef mm -hmm. to 
stews to almost anything. Uh, it's gamay is really, really flexible. So. so Jeff, if I understand from their website, they, they only have four wines right now and they only do, like you said, small batches, but it, it looks to me that you have to join their wine club or do an allocation. Is that how you get the wine you request an allocation? Oh no, it, they, um, they have a certain amount of wine that comes to a Florida distributor okay. that I work with. And um, I work within, this is actually comes from within certain distributors, they have a large portfolio and then they have certain little tiny portfolios within it. And you have to have connections in the right people that know you're the right kind of venue to sell it. I mean, would they not sell it to other people if they knew about it? Sure they would. But the bottom line is, we're the right kind of store for that because we'll explain to people who they are and that kind of a thing. So there are little pods within big companies and that's where this wine is sold and their other beautiful wines. I'd, I have their Syrah on the store, it's incredible. Yeah, I'd you have the Syrah right now? I do. Oh, I was just looking at that. I'd like to try that Gamay too. I'll have to pick up a bottle of Syrah. Yeah, I'm thinking the Gamay probably needs to come in the store. Yeah. Yeah, in addition to all their other stuff, it's fantastic. They've got amazing cab. I mean, just across the board, they're beautiful. I miss the Creo, you know, I'll have to try the. Right, yeah. right, exactly. We so, can't get any more of that. That's gone. The Creo's gone. We tried several times um, and then they said they were sending it to us and mm -hmm. then it didn't come. And okay. I think, I don't know if they, I, they probably just legitimately sold it all to us mm -hmm. or somebody in the higher ups, they realized what we were getting and snagged it for themselves. Yeah. I have no idea. It was it was really fun while it lasted. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, so this had no ratings. These guys make small production stuff. Some of their stuff does get ratings. Some does not. Um, the rosé is particularly small in production, especially being Tariga and Nationale. Let's go ahead and jump over to you know the reference there, which is. Uh, where we would put like, you know, the, uh, the wine scores, whether we'd say a good solid well-made wine. Part of what we talked about is there's a lineup of expectation with wine rating. So rate this wine in your mind and feel free to share if you want versus other rosés, you know, and then, you know, consider it's from California. It's kind of a, a small production, prestigious producer really interesting is is it interesting and stand out from the kind of character created by the the different wine grapes being used instead of something else so you put that all factored in a little bit um along with the you know the price point to me i would give this guy say all right as a rosé nicely priced not outrageously priced mm -hmm. but um you know certainly above uh, well it's above a nine dollar rosé because it deserves to be yeah you know um I would give this guy like even a 92 on rosé ratings. Like of rosés, I would give this guy an outstanding rating. I know you keep saying that because you know, and you look at me because you know that rosés are not my favorite. Mm. Obviously reds are my favorite, but um, certain reds. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I would, I would have said like a 90, 91, but for me, it's harder because it's not my preference of wine. So mm. I'm having to think, okay, of the rosés, I really like it as a rosé. I think it'd be great. Like I, I keep thinking of it with, you know, grouper. So this like white oh, fish, sure. yeah, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but so I really like it. It's just hard for me to give like a better rating to, I, I need to be more objective about comparing it just to rosés. Like, sure. yeah, because for me, I'm, I mean, it's hard to step out of, but this isn't my favorite type right. of wine, you know, sure. but, but I really like it. I think it'd be, you know, great with, you know, Northwest seafood makes fantastic. If you haven't had it, fantastic <laughs> fried grouper and fried oh, yeah. shrimp. And yeah. And I think that'd be awesome with this or with their yeah. salmon. Or, this would be amazing yeah. with sushi. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, some of the tuna yeah, roll or Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic with sushi. Think about the pairings. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd, I'd love to hear like your opinions, everybody else's opinions on like what they would, how, how would you characterize it? So we, we were trying to figure that out and we but they need to see didn't want to go full on with fried. Um, I, I would never seek out a rosé, but um, this is pretty awesome. 
and we went with we went with fish tacos. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely. And, and we had both tuna and mahi. I, I would stick with the mahi, but mm -hmm. it was it was yeah with that texture. That that was a great pairing. It just yeah, we got lucky. That's but, great. That's that's great. Well, and you know what? It makes me happy to hear you say that, which is. I love when I run a wine by the group where you'd say, I love it when you say, I wouldn't have picked this up. I did it because you forced me to, Jeff. And, uh, but I like it, you know, and that, that's my favorite thing. I was like, yay, okay. The wonderful world of wine. Yeah, you know, and that's what I, I like about these tastings too, because I am tasting things that I, I would not, I, because for me, I would pull a cab every time if I were just pulling ones. Sure. Like I wouldn't choose that for the tastings, right. but if I was just getting it for me, I'd have a cab every time. Sure. So. Yeah, so, I know like, the vote of like, Brian, when you pulled up the number scale, he goes 100, I give it a 100. <laughs> <laughs> you calm down, like just cause you don't get it very often. It, it yeah. is, it is a delicious rosé, mm -hmm. it really is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm super happy and once again, I didn't taste this before tonight. So this is my blind tasting and I'm I'm really, really happy. I'm totally not shocked. Can you go I'm back to a bit why, of a fanboy? Why did you do it without tasting it? Like what what made you think it would be good for this? Oh, because I've had their other wines and they're okay. spectacular. So you just trusted yeah. the wine. Right. Because okay. I've had their Syrah, I've had their Cab, I've had mm -hmm. their Shard, I've had their uh, Creo, which is another version of their Cab. Okay. Everything I've had from them has blown me away. And so um Anyway, so I, I just really felt like, A, I trust these guys. Yeah. And B, I love the fact that this was Toriga Nacional, which I love that grape. Mm. Now, I know from, you know, that's that's something I know, because I'm like, oh, Toriga Nacional, you got me, you know, there. But it's a little, but I knew, I do know the, the grape, so I was really intrigued. Do they always make rosés out of that grape? This, they do. They do, yeah, but they do. other wineries. Oh no, I've never ever heard of a Toriga Nacional Rosé before. Now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's very unusual. So when they use Toriga Nacional, is that what the kind of wine is called? Like what, what is, what kind of, like if they're not doing oh. a Rosé, what are they oh, making? Like in Portugal, they'll name them after the region. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So it, it would just be, it would be in there. But Whatever it would, it would be named after the region, which okay. we'll cover when we do Portuguese wine. Okay. Yeah. So when you pull a Portuguese wine, are you choosing the same grape then? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. You okay. definitely. Well, also because it's almost hard to avoid. Oh, okay. <laughs> because this is the grape. Of oh, it's the, okay. it's the grape. <laughs> okay. Toriga National. You know, when when wine salesmen come into the uh -huh. store and they say, "Oh, I have a Portuguese for you," mm -hmm. I was like, "So it's got Toriga National, right?" <laughs> Not always true, but um, usually. Okay. Yeah, you know, like a good. Almost always. Okay. So it's a great grape. You know, to me, uh, the thing with Tariga National now is it's a lot like Petite Syrah. It's an intense grape. So it was so fascinated to have a rose of that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, think yeah, my I love this. Um, and it is like, yeah, you know, like citrusy a little bit, mm -hmm. which is, I think, a little bit unusual for a um, rose. But yeah, it is also like, it's, it's not as like that kind of like, floral perfumey thing that sometimes you get out of them right. it is like yeah a lot more substantial um mm. it's funny you mentioned the grip because yeah when i came in the other day i saw i was like i saw the grape and i was just like i just started walking over the portugal section and i was like wow well, I, I don't see any roses like where is all oh, right this? <laughs> and then you're like over here actually and i was yeah. like but it but it says like right there right. <laughs> um and I just like glossed over the fact that it was actually from California. Right, yeah, you see Tariga National now. I was like, why am I heading to California? But yeah, they're growing some out there. Some bold, um, uh, you know, um, farmer out there is, is growing Tariga National. So is this the only, the only wine, and I know it's a different, like the farmers are different from the winery. Right. So what other, are there, uh, there are other wines that have the same grape or because are not Roberts bought all of these grapes, these are the only people growing it. So that's it. I do not have this. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. So no. that's how you know it's like spontaneous question. 
Yeah, right. No, I <laughs> honestly sometimes don't know. He has I mean, to say it yeah, now. It's a, it's a weekly, yes. I, I know, I know <laughs> where they buy it, <laughs> but I don't know if they bought all of it. I have okay. no idea. But I mean, you haven't heard of any other one, or at right. least anytime you've talked about California, I haven't heard that great mentioned ever. Except oh, no. For this this is the first California Turrican National okay. that I've ever heard about. So, right. I mean, not that it's not there, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen it. So, it's clearly not common. And sure. it, it, it took me by surprise. But uh, all right, let's jump back over. We'll okay. finish up with the slides. Talk about next week's wine. All right, so here we First, go. First, we have to talk about your latitude. Changes in latitudes. All right, so here we are right in the center. We were here last week. So that here. looks about the same latitude though as Portugal. If you go like straight over there. And that's a fun fact. Yeah. Yeah, and actually that is where they grow a lot of their grapes. Huh. Up at the top. Very cool. Hey, very uh, nice. I know where Portugal is. That's right. I like that. that that's pretty cool. <laughs> don't go out of Europe. I don't know where anything else is. <laughs> Next week, we are returning to South Africa because honestly, I realized we visited South Africa several times and we had not consumed their signa my signature grape. <laughs> The signature grape. So Pinotage, we're going to drink Pinotage next week. Um, uh, Pinotage is really cool. It's actually a cross between Pinot Noir and Cinsol. Okay. They ended up more robust than either of them individually. It was created in South Africa. It's very much their grape. Um, it's really cool. It's medium bodied, but intense. And it pairs with a lot. Again, it's like a, a really good... Uh, big options, you know, for, for how you're going to pair. But here we have roast vegetable, Asian sauces, curry seasoning, swordfish, or veal. You know, you, not maybe the heaviest of steaks. Right. You know, but a whole a slew filet, in between. but not like a T-bone. Yeah. Okay. So Pinotage is really, really great. Did the, the wines that we drank last week, mm -hmm. the Saran and Shiraz, those were right. medium bodied, right? Mm-hmm. I, th I thought I remembered the them being medium body, but medium heavy. Okay. Yeah, not like, quite as heavy as some, but okay. pretty pretty big. Yeah. So this would be closer to Pinot Noir in body. Okay. Uh, but it'll be intense. You know, it, it'll have a lot of big, huge flavor and um, more tannin than you're used to. Ooh. In Pinot. Good. Yeah. So, so this we're would back be interesting. to it's going to be one of those Julie like, liking yeah. and Brian disliking. Yeah, well, and also be like uh, Julie's like I'm not sure how to feel about this, you know. Oh, yeah. Why? Why won't I know? Well, because you're going to have some of what you love, but it's not going to be fully as intense. But it's going to have all the flavor. It's going to be. I think I'm really curious to see where you land. As much as where I was interested to see where Brian landed this week. I'm really curious about you for next so week. So maybe she'll be a hundred points next week, like Brian was this week. Maybe, I like that hundred points comment. That's pretty great. <laughs> so is it not as heavy as I like, but as flavorful as I do? Yes. Okay, I'm okay with that. I'd rather go in that direction than the other one that gets heavy, but not flavorful. Mm -hmm. I'm like, cool, now I'm full and dissatisfied. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, it, it's a great, it's, it's a great grape. It's a lot of fun. It's very unique. Um, it's something that we should definitely all, all, uh, all know about. I, mean, I just put those on the shelf two weeks ago. Yes, last you did. Week. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, and Ready they are in the up. store. Ready to roll. Oh, there we go. All right. Well, let's top off. We will toast and then the after party can ensue. All right. Thank you all for joining us. I hope I think you enjoyed it. I heard a lot of good, good th comments. Wait, wait, before we, before we toast, does anybody have any more comments before we turn off the record? <laughs> I think Russell just wants to say, hey, like Russell made it. <laughs> Russell. Hey, hey, Russell. Clearly. That's right. Yeah, I think um, I tell you, I, it makes me happy to choose a rose that people respond well to, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it, look, every, I am going to cycle through every style of wine, Are but rosés need to have respect, you know? I, you know, I love rosés. You gotta respect a rosé. <laughs> <laughs> That's too far. Uh, yeah, for, for the young people, that was Godfather. That's right. <laughs> right.
ready? All right. Okay. Cheers, Cheers. everyone. Oh.